welcome everybody to OPN and other channels that may be mirroring us. Thank you for uh, joining us this evening. We're very privileged and honored to have Nancy Mancias from Code Pink, a friend of ours that has been here uh, once before, and um, a special guest, Steve Rhodes, who is a photojournalist in the Midwest, and the um, slideshow we had running before the uh, show began tonight was actually one of Steve's um, photo slideshows on Flickr. So we got a good look, a good look at that and beautiful images. And we thank you both for your time tonight. Um, just a note to the chatters, we have them for 45 minutes. So somebody needs to set me on a timer. And uh, we're going to try to cover a lot of territory, but they are very busy. And as we all know, Chicago is already hopping, and it's Tuesday evening. So welcome, Nancy. Welcome back. And welcome, Steve, for your first time. We're really grateful to have you. Um, Thank you. So, Nancy, Great. if you want to give us an update on kind of what you've been doing since we last interviewed and any contact info that you want to put out there. Um that would be good. Sure. Well, thank you for having me back. Um, I had a terrific conversation with you all last time. So I arrived into Chicago late Friday evening and immediately uh, plugged into the People's Summit, which was a two-day um, day of, of education, of workshops, of activists coming together and teaching one another. Um, it was organized by the wonderful activist community here in Chicago, Occupy Chicago, Can G8, and it was just um, amazing with activists from all over the globe. We had a great um, plenary led by a, a leader in the peace movement in Germany. Um, so that was the, the weekend, and Monday, uh, just this past Monday, uh, activists in the Catholic Worker Movement launched into, well, really kind of kicked off the week of action at the Obama um, re-election campaign headquarters here in Chicago. Um, it, it was a, a real lively action. There, there was dancing, there was singing. Um, and they brought this uh, table uh, for with bread, and what they wanted to do was break bread, really, with the uh, with the Obama campaign. Um, so at one point, all the activists um, made their way um, gently uh, and peacefully um, uh, into the uh, building of the um, Obama campaign and um, sang and danced and did a mic check. Um, the protest ended with eight arrests um, that afternoon, um, but it was a really lively and a great way to start off the, uh, the week. Uh, now, this week is filled with press conferences and with actions and with marches, all dealing with different issues, not only focusing on the war and NATO, but focusing on immigrant rights, on the foreclosure issues. Um, we also have the nurses who will be in town on Friday, and they are planning a big rally um, at Daly Plaza in downtown uh, Chicago. And then we also lead into another summit. We have a counter summit that's taking place Friday and Saturday, led by the Quakers, by the American Friends Services Committee. And that's another opportunity for activists to plug in and educate and teach one another. Um, and then on May 20th, uh, there's going to be, well, we hope thousands of people hitting the streets of Chicago, uh, opposing NATO. There's going to be a concert, you know, over 45 speakers at a rally um, at Grand Park, Reverend Jesse Jackson's going to be in town, Tom Morello and his band are going to perform. So it's really exciting um, to be here. The activist community is, is really, um, I'd have to say, an alternative host committee. They have done such an excellent job in bringing activists in from all over the country. They're doing as much as they possibly can in terms of housing, in terms of food, providing a convergence space for activists to plug in and really help out and um, volunteer and be part of, of what is happening because this is a, an epicenter right now for the activist community. Um, well, all that's very exciting, and I, I love the positivity in the way you relayed that. And I think something that's surprising to us that have been watching 
is um, seeing the action yesterday and then the one this afternoon where there were a few arrests. The, um, a number of arrests have been surprising because the actions have been fairly you know, positive and energetic and 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 benign as as things go. And so I was wondering, do you get a sense of is there an overbearing presence, or is it just the desire of the authorities to try to keep things under control, or you know, what's the vibe on the ground? Is I guess what I'm asking. You want to answer? Well, I mean, Monday's action when. Um, after the activists read a statement on NATO, most of the people left. What had happened is they wanted to go up to the um, headquarters, and I actually went in the elevator with a bunch of the activists, and they pushed the floors where the Obama campaign is on, and nothing lit up, and the elevators were actually weren't moving. So they, then they went out and read the statement, and most people left after that, but eight remained who are part of an affinity group who... Um, there was a um, faith um, and resistance conference that went on at the same time as the People's Summit among the Catholic workers that they had worked Sunday planning this action. So they were willing to get arrested and were arrested. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they were um, used real handcuffs, not zip ties, and were taken away in a paddy wagon. But mm -hmm. it, it seemed to be a pretty, you know, peaceful um, arrest. And I actually on my Flickr page, which is Flickr, F L I C K R dot com slash A R I, um, I posted a bunch of, of photos there. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so from yesterday's action already, right? So Flickr dot com A R I, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. So we can look at those. Um, and Steve, could you give us a little bit of background on yourself? Because we, we sort of know Nancy, but you're you're new to us. How did yeah. you come to the movement, and how do you engage in it, yeah. and all that stuff? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I was actually um, an activist in high school and college, did a lot of work in the anti-apartheid movement, and sort of backed into journalism. I started out writing, you know, pamphlets and op-eds for the student newspaper, and then I did an internship with fairness and accuracy and reporting in New York. Um, I was a student at the University of Illinois, um, and so started writing media criticism, and you know that definitely had an impact, but it got frustrating after a while. So when I moved in New York, I worked with Paper Tiger TV, a video collective, mm -hmm. dedicated to smashing the myths of the information age. And then when I moved to San Francisco, there was a group out there that I worked with, but I also did an internship at the Center of Festival Reporting and worked on some documentaries for Frontline about General Motors and Rush Limbaugh, um, started doing freelancing for a bunch of publications, uh, eventually uh, was online editor at the San Francisco Bay Guardian, which is one of the oldest alternative weeklies in the country. Um, and over the past, I had always done photography, but over the past years I focused more on photojournalism. So you're bringing a lot to the table, and it shows in your work, and also uh, the historical background. Um, so now's a good time. I know we talked about this a little bit before. Could you speak to the importance and the value of documentation for movements like this? Yeah, I think it, it, it's it's really interesting. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get to it, but on Monday night, they actually, um, at one of the local, there's a lot of sort of local film um venues in Chicago, and one of them showed a bunch of documentaries of the 68 Chicago Convention, as well as some more recent of uh, protests in 2003 in Chicago um, of the Iraq War. Um, and so to, to see that history is really important. Another thing is I covered, um, in January 28th, there was a, a big protest that Occupy Oakland had. And part of the skirmishes were right in front of the Oakland Museum with tear gas and people with shields. And um, it hadn't opened yet then, but the end of March, they opened a 1968 exhibit. And if the photos had been in black and white and the you know moving image footage had been on 16 millimeter instead of video, they could have just fit in that exhibit. Um, so, so that's important. 
An another thing is I covered a, a press conference this morning that organizers had, and, and Haskell Wexler was there. Um, he is 90 now. He's won two Academy Awards for cinematography, um, for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf and Bound for Glory, which is a film about Woody Guthrie that they're actually showing in another Chicago Film um, Center tomorrow night. Um, and he's made a number of documentaries. Um, and he's working with um, Andrew Davis, who's best known for making The Fugitive, um, and Mike Gray, who made a number of really important documentaries in Chicago in the 60s, including one on the murder of Fred Hampton, but he also wrote The China Syndrome. And so the three of them are working with a number of other filmmakers, and Carr Temkin, which made Hoop Dreams, and The Interrupters, and a bunch to document the, the protests. Mm -hmm. And so to see someone, you know, who in 68 shot the Democratic Convention with 35 millimeter cameras to sort of weave um, it into his fictional story in Medium Cool was out with a little handy cam. And he's been covering um, Occupy LA protests and short videos on YouTube, mm -hmm. and also has a blog at HaskellWexler.com. So still um, engaged so after all those years. That's fantastic. It's yeah. a good object lesson, right? We mm -hmm. keep going. Right. Yeah, and just sort of doing searches on him today, I found an, an interview by Roger Ebert from 1969 in the Sun-Times when Medium Cool first came out, and then another one, a video interview from January where he talked about all of these recent events. And so people can probably find both of those, or I, I link to them on the photo that's the most recent on my Flickr account. Okay, great. Um, Nancy is a longtime activist and organizer. One of the things I'm interested in this week is all the <laughs> all the background stuff that happens, you know, when we see the, the marches in the streets and the actions and the events. You know, that's like the culmination, like the tip of the iceberg. I was wondering if you could give us like a little view into the background of the organization that's happening in Chicago, like um, numbers numbers of people, you know, they have working groups, you know, it sounded like a really diverse uh, spectrum of participants. I love that the Quakers are going to do their, their part <laughs> because it's like the perfect antidote to NATO, right? Um, but right. maybe just as an organizer, give us a little perspective from, from that, like how it's coming together and, uh, you know, what the participation is. Sure. Well, um, I guess some of the organizing I've seen in the past is uh, there's there's quite a no bit of infighting or egos will get in the way of, of some um, some events or some actions. And in this case, I don't see that happening here in Chicago. Um, there isn't just one um, organization taking it on. Code Pink is coming in, but we're plugging in with all the different groups that are happening. But the CAN G8, um, and I think... I'm hoping that's a link I sent to you. I'm not sure. But they seem to be a broad coalition that has a wonderful leadership of people who have been here in the Chicago area um, for a while. They're well respected. There are some organizers who have come in from New York City as well as Minneapolis that I've been working with for a number of years. So it's great to see these people who have, ha who have a wealth of um, background and education to come in and just support the local community. But it's not only just can G8, but it's Occupy Chicago, it's the labor movement, and everyone is working collaboratively to make this um, march and rally a success. And I don't want to paint a rosy picture. Um, it's interesting that um, Steve is here talking about the media, but the the local mainstream media, which is an absolute joke, I have to say, is um, focusing a lot on on the violence and you know we'll see that in the upcoming actions and protests that are going to happen at the DNC and RNC and it's stuff I have seen in the past when I've organized for the RNC in New York City as well as in St. Paul, Minneapolis. Um, there's an emphasis, there's a sensationalism, there's this strange weird romance that happens with the media and the violence um, and that we're seeing here. They're comparing um, uh, the mainstream media is comparing the the protest or they they hark back to um, 
uh, to Seattle, the battle in Seattle, or they'll, they'll tap into the history of 68 here in Chicago. Um, and uh, I guess what I'm trying to do here is is provide a, um, is support the local community and make the actions and make the marches and the and help create the rallies to be something supportive and something positive because I think we are at a significant turning point as the anti-war movement and as the Occupy Wall Street movement in building some alliances, some stronger alliances, and taking those alliances to the DNC and to the RNC so that we have a great opportunity of building networks and building a stronger um, community. And we have an opportunity of having a greater voice in the upcoming elections. And would you say that's a common realization amongst the groups you've worked with, that we do have an opportunity to really make an impact by how we uh, respond and act during this particular week in in the face of what could be some challenging events? Is everybody kind of on um, the same page with that? We haven't had those discussions yet. Right now, we are so in the moment. Um, just this afternoon, I had a meeting with one of the leading organizers of Can G8 just to kind of figure out, just kind of map out the next, you know, four to five days. So we are actually in the moment right now. So perhaps after everything is over, we can come back, debrief, and figure out what the next step to, steps are as an organizing body, um, as groups coming in um, from out of town. What are the next steps, and what do we want to see as a movement and as a community to make a difference in um, in the year? Right. Um, I want to ask a question about the mainstream media because you touched on that, and I asked the question last night, and you know this is to both of you. Um, assuming that they will try to spin it negatively because that's what what they do, should we and how can we main, for lack of a better way of putting it, maintain control of the narrative to show that that hopefully the negative is a very small small part of what will happen. That there's so much more positive and substantive going on than the the negative isolated instances, or should we just let it play out? Well, I think one big difference now, and I mean, there, there's always been alternative or underground media around different movements. Um, and if you remember back to the WTO protests in Seattle, one of the things that the organizers there did is they invested a lot of money and resources in creating an independent media center, which you know all these IMC and the media centers grew out of. Mm-hmm. So you did, you know, you saw the mainstream coverage of what was happening, but you could also look at, you know, lots of different coverage um, from Free Speech TV and Paper Tiger TV did coverage that gave a different perspective. And and now it's just a lot more diverse and and faster with Twitter and live stream and, and things like that. So, but the reality is, is that most people still get their information from mainstream media mm-hmm. and there will be good stories like, you know, the Chicago Tribune has a section with their NATO coverage. And one of the stories is on uh, Greg Brosius, um, who is an Iraq veteran, and, and he's one of the people that's leading a bunch of vets who will return their, their medals on Sunday as, as part of the march. And, you know, he... Um, is actually now a photography student at the School of the Art Institute and has an exhibit at the uh, Veterans Art Museum in Chicago. So, you know, the Trib story on, on him is a really, you know, positive and, you know, for a newspaper fairly in depth that tells his story. Mm-hmm. So, and and one thing is with things like, you know, Twitter and Facebook is when there is a good story like that, people can really share and spread that mm-hmm. in a way. You know, it's like, um, you know, 20 years ago, people might have photocopied a good article and handed it out at a protest, but now you can, you know, instantly pass it on to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Well, well, that's a good point. And I wanted to ask um, if we took the, uh, the digital slash Ethernet element out of the inqu- equation right now, is there much? tactile art going on there in communication, you know, leaflets, signs, posters, uh, documentation. Is that 
rising up? Because I always yeah. like to to have that out there, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the Faith and Resistance conference, there was a room, and people had like you know leaflets, and there were free books for people to take, and some books for sale. Um, at the um, People's Summit, there was a whole room with tables from different groups that are involved, and there was a lot of literature. I have like a you know whole pile of flyers for things that are happening this week. If you walk around Chicago, there are stickers and wheat paste around uh, the People's Summit. There was a room with them. Um, there's a art collective that's part of Occupy Chicago, and so they had an art exhibit as um, part of the People's Summit. Um, Mm-hmm. So that's definitely happening. There's there's was a wishing tree at the People's Summit where people could write on leaves their wishes, and now that's been moved to a church that's a couple of blocks from where the summit's taking place. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think we need more of that stuff, and we need to show people. Nancy, do you guys have any streamers working with you on this trip? Well, just going back to the media, I think it's so important that we have our indie media, our live streamers here with us. I know that the um, live streamers and Occupy San Francisco media is working really hard to try to get to Chicago, and I, I, wish, I wish them the best of luck if anyone can donate to them uh, to get those folks here. Um, but it's it's so, yes, we do have the main street media that's out there, some um, uh, providing uh, half half truths, um, but the the live streamers, uh, the bloggers, the tweeters, um, our independent media people, um, even our photojournalists like Steve are so important that they are here to document the truth and give the on on the ground truth because there's I, I there's going to be so much press here, so much international press here coming to cover the NATO summit. So how do we, yes, how do we control the narrative? How do we get our message out? And that's where our live streamers and that's where our bloggers and our tweeters um, and our Occupy Media people come in because it's, they're so important and they play a really crucial role um, in our protest movement. Um, so I, I just have to say that there are probably over 7,000 de- delegates um, from all over the globe that are going to be here. Um, some of them will be escorted by the, um, the National Guard. So it's, it's going to be t- – uh, Chicago will be turning into, um, I'd say, a Washington, D.C. with um, caravans and um, guarded cars uh, zooming around the city. Well, we'll yeah, actually, let you know we have a lot of streamer friends headed headed your way, and you know we're always trying to make uh, make connections. And um, you spoke about the Bay Area group. Um, we had heard yesterday that there it, there was a possibility their buses had fallen through, like the free free buses. And do you know what the status of that is? Are they stuck to being on their own now, or you know how can we help? Uh, we're in contact with some of those folks out there. Okay, so it's great that you're in contact with some of them. Um, I just read a a blog earlier from one of our Occupy San Francisco media folks that um, it did fall through, one of the buses. Um, I don't know if people realize, but if each city – each city came up with 50 passengers for a bus, and they were were golden. They were good to go. Um, San Francisco and Oakland came up with 45 passengers. Um, so they were five short, and I think that there was some sort of tension because of, of I don't know, occupies from the Bay Area, I guess, may have a, uh, a not-so-positive uh, reputation, um, but that, that so far has fallen through. Um, they are struggling for funds. It would be great to get our live streamers and our photographers and our media people here to Chicago so they can um, bring the West Coast voice here and cover for the rest of the country. Right. Okay. So we'll we'll put that word out and we try to. Yeah. We've had a lot of West Coast you know guests, so we try to be really supportive. And go ahead, Steve. I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Yeah. If you go to um, occupybayareaunited.org. They have the the story of what what happened, um, on on the website. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. there we go. Well, we'll look look at that and see if we can't help funnel some things. Uh, 
Yeah, and, and another, um, uh, well, it's not really a link, but the Wishing Tree has a, a, a Twitter, which is um, O-C-H-I Wishing Tree, at O-C-H-I Wishing Tree, and then there's a link to the, the web page, which is on chicagospring.org. Mm -hmm. uh, Chicago but I Spring. Think if people go to uh, occupybayarea.org, I think that will direct them to a WePay account where people can um, uh, donate to to get the uh, our live streamers here. Okay. And Steve, they're saying that occupybayarea.org is a broken link. Did I spell it right? Can you see it, Nancy? Um, it, it's occupy B. Oh, sorry. It's occupybayareaunited.org. Sorry okay. about that. All right. Occupy Bay Area United dot org. Okay, yes. yeah, <laughs> great. Well, that's good. I mean, that's the glory of it. We can we can fix it, right? So, um, <laughs> just generally, because you guys have been out, you know, working with the groups and on the street, what's the the overall vibe? Is positive now? It feels good. It feels energetic. Um. Yeah. I mean, the protest Monday morning was definitely very energetic um, and we've been seeing re there was a candlelight vigil last night for Palestinian hunger strikers that um, I photographed which was more somber of course um, there was an immigration march today that we weren't able to go to but um, you know seemed very energetic um, there is a fuck the police um, anti-capitalist march going on right now um, I haven't checked in on Twitter to see exactly what's happening, but um, there were some, you know, chants that would be familiar to people who go to those marches in Oakland. Mm -hmm. um, tomorrow morning, actually, in the article on Haskell Wexler, it mentioned he's going to cover a foreclosure action. There are people calling for a, a year moratorium on foreclosures in Chicago, so they're going to um, go from the Federal Reserve Bank um, in Chicago's financial interest, there was a sort of famous Michael Jordan commercial that shows that that street, and then they're going to march over to Daly Plaza and present petitions to the Cook County Sheriff, calling for him to do this moratorium. And, and Wexler says he's going to cover that, and then he's going to go out and document sort of the militarization of the police. When you walk through Chicago now, there's basically a police officer in every corner. We went to the Art Institute, and you know everybody's bags was searched. They have you know, security on, there's a bridge that goes over from Millennium Park, one of the parks, to the Art Institute, and there's security on the bridge from the Art Institute. Um, the Art Institute and sort of a lot of other uh, museums are shutting down over the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, we walked by, there's a Marc Chagall mosaic in a plaza, and they actually put plywood over that. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to go and attack a Chagall mosaic, but... That's there's definitely because of the media reports some fear. Um, there's an action on Monday um, to shut down Boeing, and actually Boeing has already told all the workers to not even show up on Monday, so they've already shut up, it shut down. <laughs> uh, Success. Yeah, without even you know, arriving there yet. Yeah, I, I always like to think that you know when when we do things and and the authorities overreact. That the contrast that we can provide by being, you know, peaceful and fun and demonstrative, um, it just you know it sets up a contrast about how ridiculous and overbearing they are. And that I like to think the average person, you know, Ethel in Kansas City is just going to say, well, that's just not right, you know, and that's how we'll win people over. So that all makes me feel very optimistic. Um, I was wondering if you could just give us a quick snapshot of a day in Chicago during NATO. Like, what's your day like? Oh my! Gosh. Well, um, each day is uh, starts probably at nine in the morning with some kind of press conference, either nine or ten, or some kind of rally, and um, goes on until the evening. Like uh, Steve mentioned, there's the fuck the police march that's happening 
right now, like this morning, there was the CAN G8 press conference. Um, right after that, there was an immigration uh, protest where you had mentioned a couple of people were um, were arrested. Organizers are in constant meeting mode. Um, this evening is the march. Tomorrow, I have to say, is um, another protest, and there's a solidarity protest with uh, Carlos Montes. Uh, one of the activists from Los Angeles who is um, being t uh, investigated by the FBI. There's, uh, there's teach-ins, there's, uh, there's talks, there's debates that are happening. Then the veterans are playing a very crucial role um, here in, um, in, in Chicago. I don't know if uh, any of your viewers know, but they do plan on throwing their medals um, over at the Convention center, if I if I'm if I'm right, um, near the convention center. Near the convention yeah, yeah, center. The, the the vet and the the trib story says that he really would like to present it to someone from NATO, but that probably won't be possible. So, that, you know, if and that's another sort of example of documentation. There was the Winter Soldier action mm -hmm. during the Vietnam War, and there was a documentary on on that, you know, which documents that. And so, you know, people can can look. You know, it probably isn't too hard to um, either rent or find Winter Soldier and watch that before or Medium Cool or a number of these other documentaries and, and films that deal with these issues mm -hmm. before, you know, the Iraq veterans and, and other veterans, um, Afghanistan veterans return their medals. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. And, and they will actually be leading the march, uh, the big march, on Sunday, May 20th, starting with some sort of uh, formation. Um, so the, their presence is, is really important here. Um, they do bring some validity to, to our movement. Um, and an, another thing, I, I want to go back to um, the organizing that's happening here. It hasn't been all that easy, I have to say. The city hasn't been very cooperative. Some of the organizers have been planning this for, you know, a year now. And um, the nurses were planning a march and rally. The city pulled their permit. Um, the veterans are planning a march and rally. The city pulled their permit. Um, but I believe that they are, uh, obviously, they're still marching. Um, the nurses have now just slimmed it down to a rally, but there's yeah, still some question about the, that. Yeah, they negotiated with the city, so the city wanted them to, to move to a band shell in Grant Park, which, ironically, is the site of a lot of the clashes in 68. Um, mm -hmm. and, but after pressure and, and legal threats, they moved it back to Daly Plaza, which is right near City Hall and sort of in the center of the city, whereas Grant Park is, is further out and not as central. The Sunday march will be leaving from Grant Park, and they just announced today that at noon they were finally agreeing with the city that the city would allow them a sound system at a couple of blocks from McCormick Place where um, NATO is happening. And just having covered a lot of protests, it seems the city would want to have as many, you know, uh, some people in Occupy don't even want to have permits. So when you have people who want permitted marches, you should try to work with them, mm -hmm. you know, as much as possible to give that outlet for, for people. Mm -hmm. um, and were those permits just pulled arbitrarily? I mean, just like um, it, it some often, nonsense it, yeah, reason? Yeah, it often seems that way. I mean, you know, sometimes, like they said, the reason they pulled the nurses' permit originally is they only expected a 1,000 people and they didn't expect, you know, uh, music. Um, but, you know, there's been large events at Daly Plaza in the past, so you think that they would be able to handle that. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, mm -hmm. it it it's, it'll, it'll be interesting to you know see how things develop. I mean, the other thing is that things keep. Uh, you, if you go to um, NATOProtest.org, mm -hmm. um, that's one of the central sites, and there's an events list, and the events list keeps on getting updated as more things are are added. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. um, so it, it's constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. I had a question right on the tip of my tongue, and it went right out of my head. That just, just irritates me so much. Oh, the the numbers. That's what I was going to say. So far, um, have the numbers of people in the protests and been act, in the actions been, you know, where you would like them to be? And do you see them growing over the week? Hmm. 
Well, I mean, there were a, a lot of people at um, the People's Summit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I was just there on Saturday, but there were lots of workshops going on. Like, I actually went to a workshop called People's Media um, with people from Truth Out and the Occupied Chicago Tribune and the People's Tribune and some other um, media organizations and I don't know, there were maybe a hundred people or so in that workshop. Um, and the other thing is, even for smaller actions or workshops, a lot of it's live stream. So there's an archive, like that, that workshop was live stream. So I think if people look up the People's Summit, or I think it's Pinkasaurus was the streamer um, who did that, um, they, they can find it. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's a, it'll be a similar thing with many of the actions. I think the, the large crowds are expected Friday through Sunday. You know, a lot of the buses, you know, with perhaps 800 people will arrive around then. And, you know, a lot of people aren't able to take over a week off, but mm -hmm. will be taking, you know, mm -hmm. a, a little over a weekend off to come to mm -hmm. the protests. So I just wanted to add one more thing to your uh, snapshot is um, a as the days go by, we're seeing more of um, uh, uh, security presence on the street, more soldiers, um, we're seeing Secret Service, we're seeing more undercover police. I just saw a couple as I went down uh, for a cup of coffee, flanking, you know, doors into a uh, uh, a hotel that you know housed a, a, a local coffee shop. So as we get closer to um, to Friday and and Saturday and Sunday, um, we're going to see a, a beefing up of uh, security of, of all kind, from the military to the Secret Service um, to local police. Right. Well, that's to be expected, right? So again, Absolutely. you know, we just give them no reason to even be there, and it kind of makes everybody. Looks silly. So we're going to open up the um, the chat now for questions. If anybody happens to have one, there's uh, one from Sapphire that's asking if uh, you've seen any deployment of the long range acoustic devices yet. You know, for disruption. Um, yeah, I don't think. I mean, the police superintendent has said now whether this will actually happen in action that. He doesn't think that tear gas is effective. Um, and so a lot of people have been getting gas masks in anticipation of that. See, I mean, Oakland is still using tear gas and flashbang um, grenades, but we may not see tear gas. He says the LRAD will only be used to broadcast messages so that mm. if there's a first alert or something, it can be heard by a lot of people, not sort of the way it was used in Pittsburgh. Right. Um, so we'll mm. probably see them, but whether they'll be used. They, they say that pepper spray will only be used um, if a police officer is, is being threatened. Um, and he's also you know, said that there shouldn't be mass arrests of, of peaceful people. So again, we'll, we'll see how this um, plays out. And, and obviously, in addition to the Chicago police, there are police forces being brought in from other jurisdictions. There's National Guard. There's actual mm -hmm. military. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, with some of the Oakland protests where, quote unquote, mutual aid was brought in, um, you know, Oakland has a crowd control policy, which they haven't really been following, but then there's all these other police forces. Right. Mm -hmm. Is anybody mm -hmm. bringing apples for the horses? Because that's always what I want to do, is like when they have the lines of horses to feed them apples. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> so what is the, um, I, I noticed in watching the streams from the last two days, that you know we have the activists and the protesters, but there's still a lot of you know non-protesting, non-activist passers-by. You know, people going to their jobs or doing whatever. Um, have you guys engaged any of those people? And kind of what are what are they thinking? Are they just navigating around, or is there um, any I feedback it's, it's, from there? Yeah, I mean it's more overheard conversations. Like 
when we were at dinner, there was someone who involved with the Coast Guard saying that they're bringing in extra people since I guess the Coast Guard will be patrolling Lake Michigan. Um, a lot of um, companies are telling people, and, and some of the area universities mm -hmm. are telling people not to come in on Friday, the day before it starts, and on Monday, where the summit continues. Um, as I said, some of the museums are closing. Um, the place where we're staying has been told that no car should uh, be outside for more than three minutes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, you know, people are definitely seeing a security culture. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, one of the reasons that Rahm Emanuel used to be a member of Congress and then Obama's chief of staff and is now the mayor said that they should have this is to show Chicago off. But Time Out Chicago did a little blog post about the Chagall mosaic being watered up and saying, well, you know, you're not seeing Chicago at best because, you know, that's one of the best pieces of public art in Chicago and right. people coming in won't be able to see it because mm -hmm. of this, you know, fear mm -hmm. that's out there. And, uh, you know, there are shops that won't be open, um, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, there, you've seen, you know, other plywood being put up. Yep. Well, mm -hmm. let's, let's, I'm going to ask this question really quick. I'm going to try to summarize it. How do message heavy images not get injected to, to MSN into the, the news cycle that imprints on our brains? Like how, how, is there any way we can prevent that? Like the negative message heavy images? Mm. Um, I, I mean, as, I mean, again, it, it's sort of surprising. Sometimes images will be, you know, like if you look at the Chicago Tribune's coverage of month, you know, I, I have a lot more images because I can, you know, put as many as I want on Flickr. But you know, some of the messages about NATO and, and peace are definitely in those images on the Trib and some of the other sites. Um, and, and that protest was on the front page of the trip this morning. And, you know, I imagine that, um, you know, there's a meeting in Obama's campaign headquarters to go over morning details. And I wonder if they discussed, you know, this image on the front page of the trip. Um, and, you know, mm -hmm. what, what that, you know, that there are these Catholic workers who are opposed to Obama's Afghanistan policy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what's our biggest challenge this week? I, I think um, our biggest challenge um, this week is, is getting our message out and trying um, to um, combat the, the mainstream media's portrayal of, of violence um, giving a negative spin on um, on the movement and um, the activist community. That that's good. And our part <laughs> is we can distribute the good stuff. Like that's how we fight mainstream media. We <laughs> distribute the good stuff via this platform and all the others at our at our disposal. Um, yeah. So, go ahead. Uh, what, what, one other issue that'll be interesting is sort of how the Chicago police deal with media, um, covering first a, a, a protest over BART, which is a public transit system in San Francisco last September, and then um, in early April, I covering an Occupy um, takeover building, I was arrested. And um, a Josh, um, who works with Free Press, has been uh, covering, I think it's mm. now over 70 journalists who've been arrested covering Occupy protests. Um, and he's been using a adjourn arrest hashtag to discuss that and track it and using Storify. Um, and, you know, it's sort of there's a slogan that's often used in Occupy Another World is Possible. Um, there was a protest in Sacramento at the Capitol. It was an Occupy education protest. And um, a bunch of people took over the rotunda of the Capitol. And it was the California Highway Patrol, actually, that is policing the Capitol. And so, actually, Nancy was among the people who were arrested. And 
when the police were ready to arrest the people who were occupying um, the Capitol, the police just asked all the media to step back. So they didn't ask for press passes. It was basically anybody who had a camera or a notebook to count the number of people who were willing to be arrested. And then we were actually able to probably get the closest to any arrested situation to photograph and, and document this. And I, I have photos on Flickr of this as well. And then there was another larger group out in a hallway. And there were photojournalists who were there that they allowed to stay, but they asked people who were in the rotunda to stay behind a rope. But it was close enough so that we could photograph and, and see what was happening. Um, and you know, Josh has written about how anybody who is acting as a journalist should be treated as a journalist, that it's often really difficult to get official press passes. Like in San Francisco, police department only give press passes to um, full-time journalists who are employed by a media organization. And there are far fewer journalists employed full-time by media organizations now, which, um, and, and there are real obstacles if you don't have that press pass, for example, there was an interview with someone in jail, which I would have photographed, but I couldn't get him to the jail without a, what's called a hard press pass or even just you know covering a fire you can't get behind police lines. Hmm. Um, so it'll be interesting to see you know how journalists are, are who are covering this are treated. Right. Okay. Um, even as as recently. Um, uh, there was an Occupy the Farm action on University of California land in Albany, and there was a woman who was live streaming the police raid on that who was arrested, mm -hmm. um, whereas mainstream media were, were not, who right. were allowed to, to cover. Right. Different rules for different people. It's something we have to fight against. Okay, one more question, then we're going to let you go because we're at 47 minutes. So. Um, a couple of people have asked if the NATO summit has a uh, declared zone around the area so protesters are not allowed to get within that zone, and if so, how big is it? Well, uh, I, I, do, I do know that there is okay. a, a few block area. I mean, there's, there's definitely heightened security, like, for example, some of the trains, which normally run under McCormick Place, aren't running. Mm -hmm. And there's an area, I think it's called the red zone. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure exactly. I mean, if people go um, you know, to some of the sites, they'll, they'll show maps of the area and, and things like that. But mm -hmm. um, I spoke to a journalist today with a, a CBS local affiliate, and she said that um, demonstrators will be kept a mile away from um, the actual summit site. Uh, is what she told me, and she wondered if, if that would just hinder our message or um, uh, get in the way of our demonstration. And, of course, it, it, it's not. We're going to be here as a community and uh, support one another and, and grow and talk about next steps. So whether we are at the front door or a mile away from the NATO summit, it's, um, the most important thing is that we are here getting our message out, and connecting with our independent media uh, journalists. Right. And, um, Steve, somebody asked if your press pass had any limitations on it, or is it just, like, situational? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean that's the thing. I, I, I don't have, like, you know, a San Francisco police press pass. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, even if you have a police press pass, the police can ignore that. I at The BART protest where I was arrested, there was a San Francisco Chronicle reporter who I photographed getting, you know, handcuffed and she had a police press pass. Um, on um, Sunday, the stage where um, the protesters will have the sound system will be at Michigan and, and Cermak, which is maybe, um, you know, about three or four blocks from McCormick Place. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, we'll, we'll see if um, the people at the summit can, can hear that. Yeah, we'll just turn it up really loud. So, well, I, <laughs> I want to let you guys go because we ran over a little bit, but I am so grateful for you taking the time and talking to us. It's wonderful to see you again, Nancy and Steve. Wonderful to meet you. We're so grateful grateful that you guys are on the ground and being our eyes and ears and trying to forward the message. Yeah. 
Um, actually, and uh, people can follow Nancy on, on Twitter, Nancy... Mencius. Right. Um, and um, <laughs> I'm, I'm at Tiger Beat. And I'm, I'm also using Instagram, um, where I'm also Tiger Beat. Um, okay. Tiger Beat, like Tiger Beat. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Be safe okay. and fight the good fight. And, you know, re remember, you know, if we can stay happy and stay united, then we'll win. Guaranteed. Awesome. But thank you guys for okay. being here. We really appreciate it. So, thank you. Uh,